Hello, y'all on YouTube. This is Rob with Rob's Nerdy Knives. Today, we have a very special review impressions of two knives that was given to the channel for me to check out and then to give away. And so I wanted to do them together because they kind of fall into the same category. And I think we're going to have um, things we're going to appreciate about both of these knives that are very similar, but they're different. And, I, and it's nice to compare the two because it gives you what are some options that they have. So let's talk about them. All right, so the two knives that we have that we're looking at today is one is called the Urban uh, Ranger. This is the OD Green, beautiful D2, um, D2 steel. It is on steel liners. It's got G10 on the outside, steel D pocket carry clip that is reversible. It does have cage bearings in there. It's got a pretty big flipper, so you got to clear that flipper there. And uh, and the best thing for this one is uh, is a is a push button as far as that flipper is concerned. But D2 steel. Nice materials, nicely chamfered all the way around. So there's that one. The next one's called a fang. Now this is a liner lock. This one is a crossbar lock. And this one is, again has steel liners as well. It has a, a backspacer. It does have this big lanyard loop over here. And on this one, there's really not a lanyard loop, but I mean, I guess you could make that the two standoffs, the lanyard loop if you wanted to. On this one, it's uh, uh, just a very aggressive lanyard loop. Now it's a little sharp on the edge. That's kind of a, my, you know, if you're wearing gloves or you're using outside, then it may not matter. Uh, those are more my personal preferences to, to you guys. It may not matter. I know a lot of people love uh, giant mouse and I, I, I just can't use them because they, they bug me because of that. But so many of you guys do love giant mouse. And if that's not a big issue for you, then there you go. Right. So then this, this shouldn't bother you as well. The nice thing about this one, they're both D2 steels. They both have G10 scales. One's uh, OD green. There's different color versions of it. They're both steel liners. This is crossbar. That's liner log steel. Um, a steel clip on this one, it's, it is reversible on both sides. This one is relatively deep, uh, but the lanyard, the lanyard does take priority on this one. This one as well is relatively deep, almost fully hidden. There's no lanyard priority on this one. Both are black Cerakoted. I believe it's Cerakoted on those. Both of them are caged, um, um, if you will, caged, caged, um, cage bearings uh, on the inside as far as their action is concerned. They both have captive pivot 704. Um, looks like a T8 right there, T6 hardware all around, very similar clip as far as pretty long clips as well. Uh, this one also has a little swedge on top, not a, as aggressive. It is a Tonto blade. It does have a nice point and apex there, a nice tip. It does come up to a pretty pokey tip, great for poking into things. This one has a nice pokey tip as well, definitely great for getting into things. What makes these two uh, fantastic is, let's just talk about the price points. This one is this one is $30 as of the, this video. This is $29.99. This one is like $27.99 or $26.99. It's like $27 or $28, bucks, which is ridiculous. It's phenomenal. We are talking competitive, if not a little better than Sencut kind of prices. Now, um, the manufacturer has, he hasn't told me who's the OEM, but I can tell you, I've heard stories that it might, you know, at some point, maybe they were working with Civivi. Um, a lot of the things that I see on here makes it look like it has some Civivi influences. It definitely looks like that. Um, it also has some, maybe some Sencut influences, right? So I see that. I can see that. Now, whether they're still working there or not, this, there are, they are OEM for them. So it's, you know, for his company, 704 Tactical, really cool uh, channel. I'll have links and everything down below. Uh, I, I, I think I can see that. And uh, he's protecting that, you know, especially if you're the size that his company is and the size of his channel. I mean, you know, you're not going to always disclose where your pipelines are because as you know in the knife industry if there's somebody who can make it cheaper there's going to be more competitive people are going to try to so i get that i get that but i can I, you know if, if i had known better if i hadn't heard any of the history of the rumors i would feel this this one feels a lot like it has some strong send cut influence right this gives me the impression of send cut that's what i'm getting on this one right on this one over here i get the impression of send cut and civivi for sure it definitely gives me that. It's solid, uh, dead centered on that one. When I got them in, one of them was a little off, but I just tightened the pivot up and got it nice and centered. I mean, for that price, this basically creates a whole new category for me. What, what we're looking at now is what I call super budget. And I hadn't really had a category like that yet. I ran into it with Remit. Remit gave, gave me a knife that was really cool. It was D2 steel as well. And I thought, well, man, that one really falls into that super budget category. Well, sure enough, um, you know, and I wasn't sure, was there anybody else who's going to be competitive as well in that category? You know, you, once in a while you might see something, but you never really see something really competitive. And then 
704 Tactical, lo and behold, they come across. Remit comes across. And then there's some other manufacturers out there that are starting to get into this realm. And, you know, the market right now is really very hot for budget knives. And, you know, if your first knife, you're looking for a first knife either to give away, to buy, and you don't have a lot of money, and but you just want something you can beat up, chew up, replace maybe a, a beat up kind of knife and you have nicer knives you don't want to ruin them if you're outside working the yard you're camping things like that this is a great alternative really is all right so i i want to talk about that g10 chamfered all the way around beautiful material steel liners cage bearings a lot of similarities uh blade to handle ratio is a little short on this one but that's okay it's got a priority for a lanyard which you know if you're outside and you got gloves on you can definitely choke up definitely big hands on this one we're going to do some weights and measurements here in a second um so you know both of these knives are interesting one definitely for smaller hand one for larger hand maybe one is a little more you know you know clandestine hidden on your body one's a little more overt for hard work i don't know whatever whatever it is for you so that that's the blade the steel um D2, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and do some weights and measurements on these guys, all right? So obviously the first one is probably going to be a little lighter, so we'll do the first one. This one's going to be 3.4 ounces, so not a super heavy knife, but not a super light knife. The bigger one's probably going to be a little heavier, you have 4 ounces. So definitely a little more weight on that one for sure. Let's go ahead and look at the lengths on these two guys. So we got a, a, a 3.4 ounces and a 4 ounces. So let's see, what does that translate into? All right, so the 3.4 ounce knife, we're looking at a knife that is about just under 7 inches. I'm going to say it's uh, 6 and 3 quarters inches total. You'll look at a handle length where you can use it, and you've got about 3 and a quarter inches. You can use that trigger choke up position. It's not super easy, but it could be used, which, which could give you a 3 and 3 quarters of an inch handle probably. The overall blade length on that one is going to be just under three inches from the tip to the back of the handle. The actual cutting length is going to be about, let me make sure I get there, cutting length is about uh, two and three quarters. All right. As far as the Tonto version, that one is coming in right at uh, seven and three quarters of an inch. The overall handle length from the, from, from the little cutout is going to be about just under four inches. I would say it's three and maybe seven eighths. If you do the choke up position, choke up position on there, which is very doable, you almost get four and a half inches of handle length, right? And then the overall blade length is about three and a quarter, just under three and a quarter, maybe three and a, three and a, a fifth, right? And then overall cutting length, you're looking at about three and an eighth. So that's the overall cutting length. Now, you know, we talked about the 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 how much room you have. So I have large hands with meaty fingers. That's equivalent to maybe a extra large hand with normal size fingers, a double extra large hands with thinner fingers, right? So I've got room here for an extra large hand with big meaty fingers. Choke up position, you definitely have a lot of room. So this does give you a lot of extra room if, you know, if you're looking for something that's in, in the sub seven inch, but not super, super small. Then you have, of course, the smaller one, the Urban Ranger. And that one is, is definitely about, I'm about almost barely four fingers on there, maybe a little over three and a half inches. I can do the choke up there. I can kind of do that and get a little extra room. This is definitely going to be a smaller knife, but if you want a smaller knife that's kind of a beat up knife, then this is it, right? Uh, the detent's not super strong, as you can, you can obviously tell. I've, I've failed the detent a few times. But if you, you know, for a budget knife, you got to. So here's my thing you got to take a knife for, for its intended audience, who made it, you know, and all this other stuff. Um, I know. It's real easy to say, oh, well, that looks like the Civivi, blah, blah, blah. Well, maybe Civivi did use it. He used Civivi before. Maybe it is through Civivi still. And, and I can tell you, sometimes companies like that, if you come in and, you, you know, we got, we got the knife community where we, you know, people buy small batches. They'll buy two, three hundred knives. They'll maybe buy four or five hundred knives. And those are considered small batches, right? If you got a guy coming in and say, I'd like to buy five thousand knives or ten thousand knives for a much larger company and, and channel for his company that does well for selling things, you know, you, you might have a different type of relationship. That's the way I'm looking at it. Uh, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but I know in my business, we treat people who buy high volume very differently than we treat people who are small custom jobs, right? So this is, this is maybe someone who they say, hey, I want to make some knives for my channel. Do you have any good offerings? And, you know, the company that worked with them says, hey, we do. We have some templates. Work with these. And you can make them your own by changing some things. And and so I th I'm think i pretty sure Brian worked with them and, and got his design, his flair, his touches on this knife working with them. 
Uh, you know, I, I I suspect he's probably that he didn't write this in CAD. I could be wrong, Brian. If you are, let me know. If you did all the CAD work yourself and you were up late night, you know, uh, doing the engineering and you're doing the impact testing and the and the vector force testing and on the fatigue and metal failure and all this other stuff and did your uh, endurance testing and 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 then looked at you know um, did electron. Um, you know, uh, scan, electron microscope scan, or you did some x-rays and you wanted to see was there any metal structure, you know, did the carbites and did the uh, austenites crack and break inside the steel? Did you do all that? I mean, if, you know, I don't know. Maybe you're an engineer and you, you did all of that, and that's cool. But I suspect probably not. You know, most people aren't like that, right? Most people are not like that. That's, that's, the, that's not the norm. And uh, being as big as he is and the volume he's using and a budget knife, I mean, you know, it's a good knife. I'm just going to tell you, you know, we're, we're, uh, will I recommend it? We'll talk at the end because it's a super budget knife category and we'll talk about that. It's kind of a hint. So there you go. Um, that's the handle. That's the length. Oh, one thing I forgot to do is uh, let's do the blade stock thickness. I forgot to do that. So real quick. All right. So we're going to look at the blade stock thickness. The first one here, we're looking at 111 thousandths of an inch. So it's under 0 .1, uh, 1 point, uh, 120 thousandths of an inch or 0 0.12 inches. That's typical. So it's a little thinner. It's a nice slicer. Let's look at this other one that's a little thicker, a little more robust. What? Hold on. It's 108 thousandths of an inch. For real? Okay, 111 thousandths of an inch. All right, so it's pretty similar. All right, so I was getting a spot where it was probably a little thinner. Okay, so we're about about the similar length on those things. All right, so that's not bad. It's not super overly aggressive thick, but it's thin enough that it will have some sliceability. You'll have an edge that can cut. that will actually work. It's not so thick that it's impossible. This is probably a little slicier as far as the blade than this one. This would be great for, you know, what, you know, I don't know if you're hunting, you know, and you're skinning and things like that, you know, cleaning off uh, uh, maybe a, something, some game that you were hunting for and stuff like that, that could be used or prepping food prep for, at the campsite. Uh, this would be great for hard use. You, know, you need a sharp, um, hard tool to cut through things. Definitely, definitely some possibilities there. So as far as knife category, so like I said, I, I typically have a budget category, a regular category, a high-end cut category, and a custom mid-tech category. I've got to add a new category super budget and super budget for me is anything under 50 bucks this has redefined that remit and and 704 tactical have redefined that for me um, um remit had a knife that they sent to the channel we gave away and it was a super budget it was really really good 704 falls into that um it's definitely a competitive uh, and i look at my reviews i look at my stuff for what its intended purpose is, the target audience, the cost, what you're de what you're dealing with, right? Um, this is definitely a step up from a gas station knife. This is not a, a dangerous gas station knife. This is not some five dollar, three dollar, super badly made knife that's going to fail after you use it for a little bit, right? Uh, this is a we're looking at a higher quality knife here. Also. Um, being that this is 30 bucks, being this 27 or 28, I, uh, the category for me, you know, that's the super budget. Also, the purpose, EDC hard use collection. Well, super, ca you know, I always say budget is not a category, and you could collect whatever you want, but this to me is absolutely not co uh, uh, collection piece, right? Even even if you like collecting, is not co it's not a collection piece. Unless you're a super huge fan of 704 Tactical, then maybe it's a collection piece. I don't know. Maybe you're a super fan, and, and you're like, ooh, that's cool. I want to... Go for it, man. Maybe get him to sign it. If you run into him, let Brian sign it for you. Maybe I'm sure he would. If you asked him, you're a big enough fan. I'm sure he'd be ha happy to accommodate, right? Uh, but um, I will say uh, it's not a collection piece. But is it hard use? Is it EDC? Absolutely, 100%. This is th this is the epitome of hard use in EDC. You're going to be able to beat the heck out of this. I want to almost. I almost want to use a cuss word, but I don't want to get demonetized. But the double uh, H E double. H E double hockey sticks, right? You can beat the heck out of this knife. This knife is meant to be abused. And you know what? Once you ruin it, if you overuse it, get another one. They're 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 dirt cheap. They are they are great prices for what you're getting. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the overall design. Open and closing, textures, jimping, lanyard, all that stuff. For $27, $28, this thing right here. It's phenomenal. I, I'm sorry. You know, it, it, is it perfect as far as the detent? No. Is the flipper a little big? Yeah. Is it, you know, if I was if I was judging this as a hundred, hundred fifty dollar knife, I'd be more critical. But at twenty seven bucks, I'm sorry, man. This is this is just good. It's good. It here now it locks up. 
It locks up in there. There's no pivot lash. You hear it. Click into place. There's actually no detent lash. I mean, the detent's not super strong. I get it. I get it. Because I could probably, yeah, I could probably do that, right? But this is something you're going to keep in your pocket that you're going to pull out when you need it. Which, you know, in some way, if you need it quickly in a spot, there you go. Now you've got something you can quickly open with one hand. So even if you don't want to flip it, this is kind of a nice feature, right? Then you have the crossbar lock. This is a little bigger, a little more robust. This one's going to be a little harder to flip, right? Can I flip it? Most crossbars, I can. Yeah, most crossbars, you can. I can usually do it on all my bench maids. I can do it on anything that's crossbar. Uh, you have enough momentum. Crossbar is not... No, that's really hard to do. I don't want to drop it. But it's they're not known for their, you know, detent. They really don't have detent. It's, it's, a, it's a lock bar that pushes down on the tang of the blade, right? But solid, pretty strong crossbar Omega spring there. So that's nice. Does give you a nice flip action. And the thing about a crossbar is... You can use it one-handed, right? So that's nice. So the opening and closing to me is nice. The chamfering's nice. It's comfortable. This doesn't have a hot spot. It rounds it. Comes up with a nice loop. All that stuff is comfortable in hand. It doesn't bite me. It doesn't, you know, get me. Same thing for here. Even though it's a little small, it still doesn't bite, bite, bite me, right? I can still choke up. If I needed a small knife or something small, small cuts, this would be nice for that. This would be good for small prep work, you know, as a backup knife. If you need something sharp, you know, off to the side, you didn't want to, you know, if you're somewhere where you're afraid you might lose a really nice, expensive knife, this would be a great alternative. So there you go. So I like it. I like the, I like the, the, the overall design for the price. For 30, 27, 28 bucks, I, I can't complain. I, I cannot complain. I mean, I feel like you're getting a whole lot for what you're paying. You really are. And it's solid. It's solid. It's not. You know, I'm looking at this, I've been using this and flipping it. I, I don't feel like it's one of these things where I'm like, mm, it's a little wiggly. It doesn't look really strong. I bend this. This is all wobbly. No, it's it's in there good. It's in there really good. It's like like one of the budget Civivi knives without the C Civivi name on there, right? So it's a little cheaper. Or maybe a Suncut kind of knife without the Suncut name on there. That's what I'm comparing it to. And, and you know, if you're, if you're all going to say, oh, it looks just like, yeah, sure it does. And here's, here's the thing. I found out he did work with them. He originally worked with uh, Civivi, and you know Civivi then had their, I think he started working with them a few years ago or something, and then they came out with their Suncut whole line. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe because this guy started working with them and did a lot of knives, maybe that's where the whole Suncut brand name came out. I don't know. I'm just speculating, but we don't know. So we can't be negative about things we don't know. We can only be, we can only say about what we do know. And uh, and I, I will address one thing. Some people have talked about the fact that uh, you know he said he worked. Um, long hours on this design. It means something different for everybody. All right. If you were to ask someone like uh, Sharif, who actually designs in CAD, does his own knife work, and a lot of people go to him and he'll work with them and he'll do design work. Um, I think of someone like, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, what is it? Uh, um, Devo Knives. So, so Kevin does great designs. He comes up with cool designs. But I believe if I, I may be wrong, maybe Kevin learned CAD, but I think. Kevin has the designs, he has some ideas, and then he works with uh, Colin, and Colin will do the, co uh, the CAD work. He'll put up the specs, he'll do all that other stuff, and so they work together in that regard. If, I miss, if I'm misspeaking there, please correct me, by the way. That's, I've always had that assumption, and I may be wrong. But the whole idea is that, you know, someone working with someone can mean different things. You know, Metal Complex is coming out with a cool new knife, the Excalibur. I pre-ordered, I want that integral. It's a whole lot more expensive than this, I know. But again, that is a knife where he's working directly with Kunwu. And Kunwu did a lot of the work. You know, they're doing the technical, the design, the CAD, and all that stuff. And he's just talking about, he did a lot of the design. He had a lot of influences. But when you look at his knife, you can say, ooh, there's a lot of Kunwu influences. Or is it really more of the metal complex influences on the Kunwu design, right? So six one, six of one, half a dozen of the other. You know, I'm not going to be critical. I mean, everyone, no one's going to be happy with everything. And no one's going to be... No one's going to be uh, ha no one's going to be happy with everything, and no one's going to be, uh, you know, absolutely. This I don't think everyone will dismiss it. So, you know, that's I don't know if I'm making sense. I, I'm rambling a little bit. You're getting some of Rob's rambling here. I think it's a great knife. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with the intent of what it's doing. This is a super budget knife. This opened me to a whole new category that I feel like I, I need to explore probably a little more if I get the opportunity from different manufacturers. If I get a chance to check out more of their super budget lines, I will absolutely 
absolutely do that because I look sometimes for knives like this as gifts to people. If it's somebody's getting a first knife, I'm not going to go spend $100, $200 on a first knife. They might not care about and they might not even place correctly and they'll lose it, right? That's, that's foolish, right? Um, people have to start really carrying the knife and enjoying it and using it to see the value in it. And then they, you know, decide they want something a little nicer. But that's my two cents on there. So that's the overall field closing is great. Sorry, I'm getting back to the ergos and feel. Fidget factor, what do I think? Well, first one, you've got a liner lock. That works well. You've got a flipper that works well. The button lock works well. The, the light switch works well. You do have middle finger reverse flick. That works well because it's a liner lock. I can do it left and right handed. So this one does well. It actually is going to give, I'm going to give this one a four out of 10 for fidget factor. Um, it does. Yeah. Four out of 10. It, it does it well. And it, and it closes and open uh, well. Now, the reason why I'm not going to give it a five is because the closing, it does have a big flipper. And sometimes you catch that double clutch. So what we call a double clutch. So some of you guys, if you didn't know in the, in the knife industry, what we call a double clutch is there's a detent ball. It locks in here. That's what closes it. And when that detent ball gets over the tang of the blade, just before that lock bar gets right behind the blade, you'll see right here and it falls over to the left, to the right, that there's a detent ball right before there. And you'll see that, you'll see the lock bar once it clears it. You see how there's a little room between the lock bar and the blade? Once it clears that detent ball, you see how it moves? It ha and But the lock bar hasn't gone behind the blade yet. That's the detent ball. That's what we call the double clutch. So there's, there's the first one. And then the, 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 the distance it takes for getting from the ball to where it engages the lock, that's called a double clutch. If, if you do it up here and it doesn't clear that lock bar and then it engages back, we call that a double clutch. If you can get it low enough and then it clears it, you're fine. So that's called clearing the double clutch. Now, some knives are really great about that and they're much higher end knives. They're way more expensive knives than you would expect them to do that, right? But for a budget knife, I can't really complain because I can clear it, right? I can clear that. I can still close it one handed. So I mean, 27, 8, 28 bucks. I'm sorry that that's not a that's not a deal breaker. It's just not. All right. So that's that's the first thing. So that one's going to get a four out of ten. This one right here is axis lock, uh, crossbar lock, right? Benchmade came up with the first axis lock and then their patent ran out and everybody can make them now. And some people call them the able lock, the river lock, the tech lock, all different locks I've heard out there, but they're all a versions of the, the crossbar lock. So you have the crossbar. That's one. It works really well. You have the thumb studs. They work really well. Nicely rounded, very comfortable. There's really no other axis. So for me, this one's going to give it, a, it's a 3.5. I'll round it up to a four, but it's not a solid four. It's a 3.5. So that's a 3.5. This is a four and they're both rounded up to a four. So fidget, fidgety goodness. Well, because of that, I will take points off. It's not perfect. But for the price, for the fidgety goodness, I've got to give it a solid a, a B plus. This is like an 88, 89. I'm going to give it almost an A. I can't quite give it an A because, you know, it's just it's a, it's a big meaty fingers. But here's the thing. Most likely the person who uses this knife are not going to have big giant meaty fingers like mine. And you'll have smaller fingers and you'll clear that much easier. So for you, this may be an A, right? It may be absolutely... You may absolutely be able to get by that. Your fidgety goodness is going to be much better because you don't have big old giant meaty thumbs like I do. You're going to have a little itty bitty finger that's going to clear that and it's going to be much easier to get by, right? So, you know, there's that. As far as this one over here, it's just solid. It opens well. It's got a nice, strong resistance. Now, I did fail it there because I always have trouble with any crossbar lock doing reverse flick, but it works and it works very consistently. Uh, I have some some crossbar locks where I fail it very regularly, reverse, and then usually I don't have it this easy, comfortable on the other side. The texture here makes it very easy to control and hold. Oops, sorry. Get your finger on there. Um, so I'm going to give this one a so This is going to be an A minus, a 90. I'm going to give it a 90 as far as, again, $30. Come on. $30 as of this video? Uh, yeah, it's an A. All right. It's an A for 30 bucks. I'm sorry. You You call it a curve, whatever you can. I'm, I don't, I'm not going to apply my custom knife expectations. I'm not going to put a skiff made blade fugitive or a brown knives Cortex XL expectations on this knife. That would be ridiculous. Okay. That's ridiculous. So based on that, what are my recommendations? I recommend them both. They're absolutely recommended knives. I, I like 704. I'm very impressed with it. Um, he gave them to me, no expectations, not getting paid. They were knives that Hey, you want to give them away? I said, sure. You want to take them, check them out? Sure. And I told him, I said, you know, I, I, 
I'll be fair because if you send me a five hundred dollar knife, I'm going to judge it like a five hundred dollar knife. You judge, you send me a, a you know a hundred dollar knife, I'm going to judge it like a hundred dollar knife. That's actually actually what I was expecting. And then when I discovered it was like thirty and twenty seven, twenty eight bucks, I was like, oh, well, that's even different. That's like now you're in a bonus area. I mean, does it just work? And and for that price, I'm almost like, yeah, if it's safe and it works, that's a good knife, right? For 27, 28 bucks, especially with today's economy, that's a that's a good deal. Well, lo and behold, it's solid. It feels, it, honestly, my opinion, this is just me, I, it feels like a Civivi Sencut kind of version of this knife. I don't know if they're the OEM. He's not disclosing, and that's his right. I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to push, but it sure feels like it. I'll just tell you that. Um um, whether it is or not, I don't know, but I can tell you from my personal experience and the feeling and handling a lot of Wii knives that this, this, it feels good. It's someone who's very similar to them, if not, all right, uh, quite honestly, where I'm really leaning, it feels a lot like a Suncut, but, and I like Suncut. I think it's a fantastic budget brand. I really do. So yeah, it's recommended. You know, you tell me what your thoughts are. What do you think? Where, where do you stand on this? Do you think I'm an idiot? Do you disagree with me? Um, that's fine. Uh, I can tell you, it's it's not a clone. And and here's the thing: if if Sencut or Civivi are doing this, that means they're using some of their templates to help him make his knives, right? And I can tell you, I've I looked them very closely. I forget which one they're comparing this to, but there's changes in the handle, little subtle changes that are in here that make this knife different. And uh, I, I've looked, I've looked. There's certain things that definitely change the flipper size, the handle, some other things. So this is definitely not. There's enough subtle changes that it's different, right? And if it was an absolute clone and it said Civivi or it said Sencut or Wii or something on there, that to me is a clone, right? That That's different. Um, and that's not. And the fact that I know that he worked with Civivi makes me say, you know, okay, sure, it looks like some of their other designs because, you know, they might have been the ones who helped him design it. So there you go. That's my two thoughts. That's my, my two cents on it, my thoughts, my review, my impression. You can disagree with me. You can think I'm an idiot. I'm okay with that, right? I'm just giving you my honest, honest opinion, my honest first impressions, my first long term, longer term impressions. Did I hard use them? Did I go out and beat them up? No, because these are giveaways. One, two. I don't do that. I'm not a stress test, destruction test kind of guy. If you're looking for that, there's some other great channels out there. Go check them out. I I can probably recommend some people to you. Uh, there are many channels out there who do that. I'm a guy who uses his knife like probably 98, 99 percent of the people. I will break down boxes. I'll cut things. I'm, I, this is a kind of knife I'll go out in the yard. I'll cut some branches with. I maybe cut open some fertilizer, some mulch, some uh, dog food, cat food, cases of water, you know, cat litter, uh, lots of boxes, break down boxes. I'll do all that with this knife, no problem, right? And that's the kind of thing I will do with the knife. And and it, for what I've done with it, opening some boxes, opening some cases of water, opening some dog food, cat food, it's been great. It really has. And the, the coating has actually held up pretty well. I was very impressed that uh, I rubbed it off and there was no scratches. I mean, it, it really made me think a lot like, you know, like like a cut knife. So I'm just saying that's, I don't know if it is. I'm not making any speculations. I'm not making any claims. I have no inside information. I'm just telling you, that's my impression from what I, from what I've heard. And then from what I'm feeling the knife. So there you go. There you have it. That's my, that's my review. That's my thoughts. Hey, if you found this content fun, interesting, worthwhile, informative, or you think I'm a complete idiot, either way, I appreciate you watching the video this far. Um, if you haven't, uh, maybe consider hitting the like button down below. And if you don't like me, maybe dislike button. That's fine too. I'm okay. I'd love to hear your feedback. Um, if you've already hit the like button or dislike button, maybe you dislike me enough that you want to keep watching my content. And so you can keep disliking me. That'd be great too. So maybe hit the subscribe button as well so you can watch this, uh, watch more video uh, videos from this channel for me. Uh, I'd appreciate that. Um, my big thank you to everyone out there who watches the content, who enjoys the videos that I put together. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate being part of the live streams, being part, part of everything. Thank you. And uh, if you haven't already, maybe hit that notification button down below so you can be notified of future content like this video. And a big shout out, thank you to all my channel members. I appreciate you so very much. Thank you. Appreciate your support of this channel. Uh, I try to do two very special things for my channel members. I do a once a month members giveaway. Usually it's very exclusive. Definitely a step up from this, right? This is more of a, uh, you know, a, uh, Monday live stream, everybody giveaway. And then the members that make it a little special, I mean, a little more special because you guys have been so generous with the memberships. As long as you, that keeps happening, I want to be generous back because I, I don't, you know, I, I want to share, you know, you're being nice to me, you're allowing me to do things. I want to share back with you guys. So there you go. If that's interest you, I'd love to have you as a member. There's a link down below in the description on how to be a member. I have three different tiers. 
you'd be honored. Don't ever feel obligated. Just do it if you want to, but don't ever feel obligated. I don't ever want anybody to feel that way. Uh, also, the other thing I try to do is every brand new channel member, I make sure I send you a channel sticker. Say thank you. I'll write you a little note. So if you became a brand new channel member and you haven't emailed me yet, or if you were a channel member all along and you're a member right now, or you were a member before and became a member again and you're a member right now, email me with your name and address if you've never asked for a channel sticker before. I'd love to mail you a sticker to say thank you. So thank you. Uh, appreciate you guys so, so very much. And uh, yeah, everybody. If you haven't already, also check me out on Instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. Again, that's on Instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day and a great week. Bye.